Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Billy. Today I would like to share with you a banker's shirt dress, uh, namely with contrasting collar and also cuffs. I know it's been a while since I last uploaded a video to my YouTube channel and that is because I was working literally around the clock uh, for three weeks um, that just ended recently. So what happened was I had two concurrent projects that had to that had very compressed deadline and so and also I was working uh, with four uh, with people in four different time zones and so basically I literally had to work around the clock uh, so I could be awake and available and working with them during their normal business hours. So for example, um, so the four time zones in question are uh, well, obviously New York and then California West Coast time which is three hours behind New York and also Mumbai India and which is uh, nine and a half hours ahead of New York and also Hong Kong and China which is 12 hours ahead of New York. So uh, for about three weeks this is kind of like what my schedule looks like. So I would get up you know by five something and took my dog out very quickly and then I would get on a call with Mumbai uh, around 6 or 6 30 a.m. New York time and because we were going over you know terms of uh, several agreements and so those calls tend to become quite long um so so there will be you know so going on for about you know an hour and a half to two hours so i will be done around 8 8 30 ish and then that that will give me a little time to have breakfast and feed my dog etc and then I need to get back on uh, by 9.30, which is the pretty much a standard starting time uh, for New York City lawyers. But don't, also because my job requires that I keep on top of what's going on in the stock market uh, in the US. And so also I need to be watching the market uh, when the, the opening bell rings at 9.30, you know, ding, ding, ding. And then it will go on. And in the meantime, I needed to start getting things ready you know for example after my calls with Mumbai I need to start assemble or revise the comments that I received from uh, folks in Hong Kong and China the day before that they have sent to you know to me overnight then I need to incorporate those accept or reject whatever uh, changes and then have everything ready by the time the West Coast people start their day um, which tend to be a bit earlier than New York. So then they would start their day, I would say by eight or 8.30 and, uh, or lawyers maybe by nine, but I was also working with various institutions. And so I need to get everything done, upload it to a secure portal by say about 11, 11.30 a.m. New York time. So then they will see it before they come into the office about eight or 8.30 local time. Then once we do that, then in the afternoon, I have a little bit break, but I still need to be watching the market and you know start processing other things or doing the real work actually. And then uh, and then by the time you know I need to start working, and so I am able to upload everything. Uh, so then the folks in Hong Kong and in China will be able to review when they get up in the morning. Uh, so basically I need to get everything done before they get into their office about 7.30 or even 8 a.m. And so that's kind of what my day was like. Uh, you, but usually I have a bit of a break. I could take a little nap, uh, you know, after 4 p.m. after the market closed and until about maybe 6. So I was, you know, since I'm working from home anyway, so I just take a little nap. Then I would uh, ramp up again about say seven or eight, you know, so I would get on calls with uh, folks in Hong Kong and in China. And so that's kind of how my day was like for three, uh, almost three weeks. And fortunately, everything wrapped up uh, on this past Wednesday, so just a few days ago. And so everybody was exhausted, but uh, but anyway, it's kind of cool, you know, to have a bit of a very compressed timeline, and it's a bit of a, a 
sort of like you just feel a lot of energy, you know, charging. But I can't sustain this for a long time. I did this when I was a junior associate, but I'm no longer am, and so uh, so I'm glad I won't be doing this you know, on a regular basis because it's truly exhausting. And but then next week I have two other projects that are also fairly on a compressed deadline, but at least they. Uh, they are both with local New York people, so at least I didn't have to really uh, stay up and stay away, you know, to work with folks from different time zones. So anyway, so that's a bit of a digression to give you a bit of an insight on, uh, on the occasional work, you know, burst of a New York City tax lawyer. So a banker's shirt for a man uh, traditionally means that shirt with contrasting color, usually white, and also cuffs. And apparently, according to Google, originally the collar um, is detachable, but later on it became the you know, one piece just sewn to the shirt itself. But the idea is that uh, the shirt, the collar portion, and also the cuff portion, uh, tend to wear out before the rest of the shirt. And so this way is a very economical way to uh, revitalize the shirt because then, you know, if the collar and the cuffs uh, wear out, you can simply change the collar and the cuffs and then everything will look brand new again. And because even if you have the original fabric, you would not have exactly the same color as the rest of the shirt because the shirt would have been wonder, you know, so many times by the time the collar and the cuffs wear out. And so that's why the contrasting fabric is almost invariably uh, white in a uh, banker's shirt uh, for a man. So and a banker's shirt dress, at least in New York, you know, both in the legal field and also in the finance field, are, you generally only see sort of old men wearing the banker's shirt. And, uh, and so, you know, so I was kind of neutral and it's, it's not something I would ever wear anyway. Um, but then I saw this picture uh, of an Alexandra Rich dress that Kate Middleton Cambridge, or more uh, formally known as the Duchess of Cambridge uh, of the UK, and I just thought she looked gorgeous in this dress. I mean, obviously she's a gorgeous woman, so she would look gorgeous even in the potato sack anyway. But anyway, I just thought the dress looked so great on her, and um, so I wanted to uh, replicate that look. However, that dress, the, uh, the Alexandra Rich dress, has a dropped waist. And uh, I guess the idea originally was that you do not wear a belt with it. But since I do prefer uh, to wear a belt with everything, and so I moved, uh, you know, so instead of a drop waist, I just, you know, have the waist start at my natural waist anyway. And uh, so that's sort of my inspiration uh, for today's banker's shirt dress. The Alexander Rich dress that was the inspiration for my banker's shirt dress today uh, is not lined as you can see from the picture here but since I do prefer to line everything anyway so I lined it uh, with navy blue viscose rayon that I purchased from fabricwholesale.com and so here are some pictures of the lining um, itself for this dress. Alexander Rich dress does not have a collar stand, no, which this one does. And uh, because I wanted to really replicate a banker's shirt, um, and so banker's shirt obviously would have a collar stand. And so that's why I did. For Even the collar of this shirt dress, I just took a standard uh, collar pattern and in, in my case it's from the uh, monster shirt uh, pattern but I uh, e lengthen this portion and widen this portion so that gives me a bit uh, wider and a larger cut um, larger collar uh, than a standard uh, shirt collar but then I did not want it to be too exaggerated because you know this is still for work and so I thought that overall I'm very happy with this uh, sort of size and shape. And since I drafted this collar piece myself, so there is no copyright by anybody else. So I'm happy to share it with you. And so I have also uh, 
provided a link in the description box below where you can download this uh, color piece and for free of course you know if this shape and size of this color piece is to your liking um, the patterns that I used to create this banker's shirt dress is a combination uh, of two patterns. The top portion is a modified version of my monster shirt by the pattern company Dress Your Body. And I previously talked about the shirt itself um, in my video 48. And uh, the skirt portion is from a new look pattern, new look 6843. And it's a, basically a quarter circle skirt. And this is a pattern I think I've used gazillion times. And I think I will continue to use because I just really love the drape and also the ease of it because it has no darts and uh, just works great. And then after, you know, because I only had a yard and a half, so originally I wasn't planning on having pockets. But then after I cut out the main pieces, I actually was able to squeeze out uh, four pieces uh, for the pocket. So, so I still have pockets uh, for this dress, so that's great. And so here's a close-up look of the, the collar itself. So as you can see, the stand, this, you know, so it's, fit, it's much larger than the uh, sort of standard shirt collar, but it's not too exaggerated that it will look comical. And then here is the, the back of it. So here is a quick video of this uh, banker's shirt dress and I paired the dress with my trusty three and a half inch pointed toe heels in black and I really like it. it you know it looks different from the other dresses that I've made for work and uh, I think it, you know it injects a bit of fun into my wardrobe but still look uh, so it looks perfectly professional. Uh, so overall, I am very happy about how this one works out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and hearing about the occasional bursts of intense workload of a New York City tax lawyer. And uh, so please do stay safe, be well, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye-bye.